You're watching a segment of The Splash, Greater West Bloomfield's news magazine show. And welcome back. And we are joined by Patrick Endress, the West Bloomfield Parks naturalist. And Patrick, uh, we have heard some rumors that there have been some coyote sightings. Yeah, so actually this summer we actually had um, a male and female coyote raise a litter of coyote pups on the Civic Center complex and campus and we just monitored it and we got some phone calls but we were able to educate the public on how to still live and be with coyotes that are in um, areas where they live. So. Okay, so I know people who have small pets yes. get very worried about this. Yep. So tell me what they need to do. Yeah, so what we always recommended for that was that um, no matter what time of day it is that you keep your dogs close to you and that you accompany them when you let them out to go use the restroom and go to the bathroom, even if it's at night, and as long as you're doing those things. Coyotes are shy animals. They're curious, but they're very shy around people especially. And so they won't want to go around areas where, coy or where people are at. So. so are there any myths that you can dispel for us about coyotes? I mean, you just said they're shy, so they're not going to approach a human. Yeah, most of the time and uh, under very rare circumstances will a coyote um, walk towards or move towards a human. And in those circumstances, you just, all you need to do is make loud sounds, make yourself look bigger. And in all those circumstances, coyotes will most likely walk away because you're a bigger animal when they're looking at you they would perceive you as a threat more than we would perceive them as a threat. Okay, and obviously the seasons are changing. Yes. We're in Michigan, mm -hmm. so what's going to happen to the coyotes right now? Where are they? Well, the coyotes will stay active, um, but the coyote pups will move on to other locations. They'll find their own territories to live, and they'll look for other areas where they can find food, shelter, and survive the wintertime. So. Okay, so people really should not be worried about this. Not at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for clearing that up. No because problem. Because we never want the community to be concerned about no, this. No, no. Um, okay, so something else. Uh, it is apple season. Yes. And that means a lot of people at the cider mills. Yeah. And that means people are feeding ducks and geese that they see. Yeah. Good idea, bad idea. So, like in, cider, in the cider um, mill case, like mm -hmm. if people are throwing donuts or pieces of donuts to ducks or geese, we discourage that for the reasons like that kind of a diet that um, those breaded material, breadcrumbs, donuts like that, they're not nutritional for ducks and geese. They're actually, they don't have any, a whole lot of nutrition that they need. The natural diets that they use to survive and help feed them and get the nutrition they need include um, insects, berries and fruit, and um, plant material. So when we try to discourage people from doing that because we want to encourage wildlife to thrive and not fill up on like junk food almost so so almost for like humans yes <laughs> yeah okay so while it's fun to do that and fun for the kids mm -hmm. really try to discourage it yeah okay yeah and again we're almost into winter yes <laughs> so so if you have bird feeders now's the time to transition um, and put up maybe a suet feeder which is kind of like a block of bird seed along with some um, clumping material and that clumping material is actually has beneficial um, nutrients in it that helps birds, whether they're migrating or staying in Michigan or in West Bloomfield, um, to survive the cold temperatures that we have in the evenings now. Okay, so a good so. time to change that. Mm -hmm. And I did ask you something before we actually started this yeah. official interview. Yeah. It was, a, it was about bees. Yeah, so bees are gonna be going into um, their hives and kind of overwintering, which means um, a small s portion of their hive will survive along with the queen. And um, so all summer long, they've been working hard to actually um, gather all the nutrients that they need to make honey and so that they can feed on that during the winter time to survive until next spring. But you are handing out seeds. Yeah, so at the Nature Room, when we have open hours or nature programming, um, we're also offering out native seed packets so people can take them and actually plant them this time of year because it actually is beneficial to plant these native seeds now because it allows for them to germinate over the winter time and the natural growth cycle that most native plants are going through. So, okay, perfect. Yeah. So they can be picked up during open hours. Open hours, yeah. We host those on the first Friday of the month and the third Tuesday of the month. Okay, perfect. The first Thursday or the first Friday is from one to four and the 
uh, third Tuesday is from three to six. Okay. And yeah. you said this is the perfect time to yeah, plant those. Yeah, this is ideal timing. Okay. Yep. All right. And there are a couple of special events coming up. Yeah. So two wonderful nature programs that we have coming up is November 1st, we actually have a mommy and me hike from 1030 to 1130. And it's a free hike where families can come out in the morning, take a wonderful hike with us along the trail. And the unique thing and nice thing about this November hike is if kids are really excited about their Halloween costume, they can wear it one more time. <laughs> So it's a costume hike. Okay, that's November 1st. Yep, and then on November 13th, we actually have a live animal show at our Recreation Activity Center. And it'll be featuring hawks, um, falcons, and other birds of prey, what we call birds of prey. So. Okay, and that's November 13th? Yes, and that's from 6 to 7 p.m. Okay, and we can find all the information on your yep. website? Yep, wvparks.org. Okay, thank you so much. And yeah. real quick, we, uh, we are getting ready to wrap up, but tell me why you became a naturalist. I became a naturalist because I had a passion for nature, and I just loved sharing that passion with other people. And then as I've gone and grown into this field, I've seen a lot of people, and the moments where you get to see people's excitement about being in nature is just so refreshing and so inspiring that it keeps me going every day so well thank you so much thank you thanks for being here yeah. and thank you for sharing your time with us and uh, warning us about the coyotes when there's really no need to even be afraid of them mm -hmm. right yep thanks yeah and we have been joined by patrick endris west bloomfield parks naturalist thanks for watching a segment of the splash to catch the entire show or other segments, watch us on Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T Channel 99, or look us up online at thesplash.tv and listen to us on WBLD 89.3, the all-new Lakes FM.